What's up guys? So the other night I caught a video from uh, Josh Pierce that's been circulating around where he talks about the Augusta music scene and I caught the reply from Stoney as well. Uh, man, what a, what a huge nostalgia trip. Uh, anyway, they've called for other people to talk about the scene from their perspective and so here I am and I put the same call out to others. Uh, sorry Stoney for not wearing a hat. I know that's what you wanted but it's just not, uh, it's not my thing. Um, so what I'm going to do is just talk about bands um, in chronological order, for me, um, how I met them. Uh, and uh, what I'd like to say in general um, is that in, although none of these guys reached the level of success that they wanted or deserved, um, I'm kind of honored to be in this elite uh, exclusive group to know um, these awesome songs and awesome musicians. Um, I still jam to the music um, all the time. So my introduction to the local scene started with Youth at Risk. Uh, one of my best friends growing up, Alex Brown, his older sister Ashley was dating Larry, uh, one of the guitarists. And though I was never really a huge fan of that um, particular flavor of rock, uh, we thought they were cool as shit and were definitely a huge influence on Alex especially. But uh, one of the reasons that we started a band in the first place um, and although Ashley's not with Larry anymore, she's now with uh, Jonathan. I think they've been married and had kids. Uh, anyways, so next on the list, I've got Gearbox. Uh, when I worked at the Westlake Country Club, Sheldon worked in the kitchen. Um, and he showed me uh, demos of them making uh, World Machines. And I was just blown away by the uh, production quality. It was like the first uh, really professional sounding uh, local band. Uh, that I'd heard. Uh, I caught a show uh, of theirs down at the Capri and uh, they played with the band Fair Verona which uh, I think were from Tennessee but they were awesome as well. I've still got that album. Uh, in college I took a course with Patrick Blanchard um, and super cool guy, a um, lot of experience uh, but totally humble you know even though I was really you know just a nobody in the beginning like he'd take the time to listen to my shitty demos and uh, even uh, when I saw him at Surrey Tavern, he let me sit in on one of his sets. Uh, so I appreciate that. Uh, speaking of sitting on sets, uh, actually the first show I ever played um, live was down at uh, Joe's Underground. And I, I wish I could remember the guy's name. Um, I want to say it was John. Uh, please let me know if you know it um, so I can thank him. Uh, but some coworkers uh, discovered him and talked him into letting uh, letting me jump in on a set. This was before I was even old enough to get into bars, so uh, I had to get some, uh, jump through some hoops there, but uh, it was super awesome of him. And I learned a great lesson, uh, because at that time, and I mean, I guess I still am very emo with my writing, uh, but you gotta play to the right crowd, right? And <laughs> that was just definitely not the right crowd, uh, and they let me know it. Uh, it's a huge lesson there. Uh, another coworker, Ghost, he introduced me to uh, Sean and Dark Corner Productions, and that was sort of my first step into actually recording. Um, he had a, a nice little home studio set up, um, and I learned a lot from him, and recorded my first couple of demos, which led to my meeting of Robert Mullins, because I had some stuff posted online, and he found me uh, and dug it. Uh, he got me my first paid gig down in Tybee Island. Um, I think the place was called Huckapoos. Um, but he tried to start a small label called Red Drum Records. I think he was interested in signing me, but at the time I was uh, going through some personal stuff and just a little too immature to uh, make the most of that. Uh, I still regret uh, not being able to take full advantage of that. Um, a little later, I met a guy named Mui. He uh, he kind of acted as my manager. Um, he introduced me to the guys at Gemini, and I remember hanging out with them at their studio downtown by the TV station. Uh, that's a pretty solid memory there. I'm sure they still have no idea who the hell I am right now. You know, that was probably one and few only times I met them. Uh, but yeah, super cool guys. Uh, a lot of fun there. When I got a little older, I was old enough to go to bars on my own. Uh, I went to open mic night uh, hosted by Happy Bones down at the playground. Uh, another super encouraging guy. Um, 
I was still fresh and untested and unsure of my abilities and he was incredibly encouraging. Uh, a regular at one of the at the uh, open mics was uh, Riley. I've heard him mention a few times here, and yeah, I was blown away by his talents as well. Um, a couple years later, I was hanging out with a friend from high school, and she showed me this album by a girl named Chelsea Logue. And uh, wow, what an incredible talent there too! Um, I saw her play. She was definitely a like, coffee shop type, but I saw her at uh, Serendipity and uh, was it Borders or Books a Million, one of those places. Um, I think she still does hair downtown, uh, so what's up? Uh, she was in a band, Estrella, as well. Um, I think she was their second singer, but they were awesome. They were basically Paramore before Paramore was a thing, and uh, it's a shame that they never took off, because I think they had a lot of potential. Uh, kind of in the same vein as Vera, and even though I've never seen them live, um, or really know them at all. Uh, I definitely heard of them and I still I think um, Brittany still puts uh, videos up on YouTube where she jams out man. She's just a phenomenal drummer um, I've got on here uh, Sector 7 as the notes. I guess that's where they played a lot. Uh, I definitely want to do a few shows there uh, I make it I met a guy through a friend of mine named Chris Dexter. He was a bass player for a band called Thin Fin uh, and through him, I met uh, John Kranz and Kevin. Uh, John, man, one of my favorite writers. Uh, just in a really unique uh, style on the acoustic. Uh, and writes some interesting stuff. Uh, he went on to form a band called Sound Equation with the former drummer of Estrella. Uh, and again, those guys really probably never made a splash, but they should have been, should have been great. Um, they were awesome. Um... And through Chris, I also met JR, who's still a good friend of mine today. Um, he makes some killer electronic music. He and I still write to this day. Uh, but again, I, I promise not to get egotistical, so I won't get into the self-promotion uh, portion of here. Um, I ran into uh, another friend uh, from high school uh, around that time, Dana Andrews. She actually went on to uh, get on the TV show Rockstar Supernova. I think it had... Um, Tommy Lee, Gilby Clark, um, Dave Navarro, and Jason Newstead uh, trying to form a super group. Um, uh, she did pretty well. Uh, definitely one of the uh, the closest to like, stardom, you know, people that I met that made uh, brushes of fame. Uh, I think she's still out on the West Coast doing her thing. Uh, anyways, she introduced me to her the, at the, the time, her boyfriend, uh, Brian, and uh, Vinny. I think they were formerly from uh, Shinebox. Um, and we kind of tried to make a, make a project happen for about a year there, and it just just didn't work out. Um, we were just, there was a bit of a generation gap, and we just couldn't work things out. But that led me to my next band, Ring of Saturn. Um, which was the first fully legitimate um, effort I made um, and the only album that I've actually ever pressed. Um, but uh, Gary and James and later Sean who jumped in on that, I, I can't thank them enough for their support and helping me make that happen. I'm still super proud of that album even though you know I wish I could do things differently now with the experience that I've got. Um, I still like the music a lot. Um, but that band never panned out um, and kind of led me to where I am today, but uh, they went on, um, at least James and Gary, uh, to still play in the local scene as the Unmentionables. I don't know if you've ever seen them around. I'm not even sure if they're still uh, jamming. I've kind of lost touch with them uh, over the past 10 years. Uh, I forgot to mention that I'm a native of Augusta. I uh, was born and raised there. Uh, but. Uh, I've been gone for the past 10 years. I joined the military and kind of bounced around. And I think I've kind of settled roots here in Maryland, so I won't be coming back. Uh, anyways, back, uh, back to about 2007. I was working at uh, Miyabi as well. I started working there. And a guy named Reno worked there as well. And he was in the Edison Project. Uh, and I'm just thinking, okay, you know, another local band. Uh, but I'll check them out, and my God, did they blow my mind um, to the fact that I I got really fanboy on them. I'm sure I probably annoyed the shit out of them uh, with how 
over enthusiastic I was about their music, but it was really just that incredible. Um, they really know how to write a hook because um, if you go, if you ever went to one of their shows, everybody was singing all the time. Uh, you listen to a chorus once and you know exactly what the song is and you're singing along. Uh, a lot of fun, fun times out there at the Red Line and then the after parties at the Casbah. Um, man, good stuff. Um, and that's pretty much it. That's about the time that I, I pieced out of Augusta. Um, I, I threw on here Eat Lightning. I think that happened after my, uh, after my time. But that was uh, my brother's uh, good friend, Albert. Uh, he was a bass player in that group. Uh, my final note here is for Chuck Williams and 95 Rock. I can't thank them enough. Uh, you know, I don't understand the politics of uh, the radio business, so I'm not sure how much control they had over the format and the songs played. But um, listening to those songs on the radio growing up, uh, back, you know, before it was even 95 Rock, was it Channel Z and, and then RXR and stuff like that. Uh, but all those songs had a huge impact on the artist that I am today. And, and everybody that I mentioned, you know, you're all part of my story. And, and I appreciate everything that you've been for me. Um, anyways, that's all I've got. Uh, it's been a lot of fun. Like I said, if you've got your story to add to this, please do uh, tag anyone below uh, that you can. Um, hope everyone's doing well. I haven't seen a lot of you guys in a long time, so uh, again, hope everything's good. I'll see you later.